back in Tamagami and I'm on Red Squirrel Road. I'm um, just driving to the put-in and um, there's a big storm here yesterday. Really, really high winds and there are a lot of trees down. Um, thankfully, it looks like someone has come through since, since they fell with a chainsaw and moved the trees and cleaned up the road, which is amazing. I didn't even think of the possibility that I might not be able to get down the road. I should be at the put in, I think in about 20 minutes or so. Um, this is one of those roads you have to drive really slow down. So I am doing that and making my way. Hey, well, it is quarter after four on Thursday, uh, October 4th. Um, I am at the Red Squirrel Access. I've just uh, loaded up the canoe. I managed to stick one more fleecy in there. I'm not sure how. Um, I had it on with my raincoat and uh, just bringing the canoe and the pack down, I was like sweating. So um, it's, it says it's eight degrees, feels like five. There's supposed to be 30 kilometer wind gusts. The water looks pretty calm so far. I mean, it's not glass, but it doesn't look like 30 kilometer gusts anyways. So. Um, I have a short paddle. I think it's about one and a half kilometers to the portage um, into my first lake. I can't remember the name of it right now. And then I have uh, like a 1200 meter portage into Lenore. That's where I'm staying. So I need to get going because uh, it gets dark at, well, the sun sets at 6.53. Um, so I've got about three hours from now before it gets dark. So I've got to move it. So off I go. And I'm off. <laughs> well, I found the sign. And I found the portage right behind it. Sweet. Portage number one. I think I have 16 this trip. Yikes. I've decided to wear my water socks and my Keens. Uh, I should have just left this. I'll pick it up on the way back. Uh, Decided to come with the pack first so that I could check out the portage because uh, it looked really narrow and just make sure there's no uh, trees down or anything and uh, I can see a lot more when I walk with the pack so here we go. Lots of rocks and trees down. Well, I've got a crazy portage right from the jump. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, tricky, <laughs> tricky. Had lots of uh, areas where the trail is just all water. I'm trying to get through this quickly, so I'm not doing a lot of filming right now. Uh, which way? <laughs> this way, this way. Let's try this way. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get the canoe in here. <sighs> Whoops. Almost fell. I'm trying to walk fast without getting my pants wet. Oh, it's too late. <sighs> oh, I just finished the 500 meter portage. Uh, it's making me rethink this entire trip. These two portages in Eleanor are supposed to be the ones that are the most maintained and used. And uh, if I didn't put a hole in the canoe, I'll be amazed. Uh, it scraped against every single tree in there. Um, anyways, I gotta keep going because I'm racing the light here. 
I have a 1200 meter and hopefully it's not like that one. <laughs> Welcome to Jameson Lake. Super small, super pretty. Oh, I think this is my next portage. <laughs> well, <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> I think maybe I should have <laughs> brought the pack through first. Oh my gosh. This is bad. Every 15, 20 steps I've got an obstacle. And, oh man. Okay. Well, this trail for me right now is impassable. Uh, it's going to get dark in about an hour and a half. Um, and I can't get through by myself, let alone with the canoe. Um, I'm going through stuff like this and it's scraping the, the skin. And I mean, this is a tough canoe, but I'm gonna poke a hole in it. And I walked without the canoe for a ways. I can't find the trail. Uh, everywhere that I try to go, it's impassable. And uh, I'm in over my head here. I, I can admit that. Um, there is no campsite on Jameson, but I'm going to go, uh, I guess, try to make a makeshift one or maybe just make one on the portage here. Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to think about it tonight and um, maybe go through Coco Co. Uh, Lake. Um, I'm supposed to meet Dave. L let's talk about it later. I'm going to get out of here first. Well, I went back to the start of the portage into Lenore. I paddled back across Jameson and I did the portage again from Jameson back out to Red Squirrel. When I came into Red Squirrel, I passed a really nice campsite and it was the last one before Lenore. Um, so I gunned it. I, I rushed and I came back and I got here. Um, I had actually quite a bit of time before it got dark. Got my tent set up, blew up my thermo rest, put all my clothes in there, everything. Um, got that all done before dark. So um, I'm starving. I haven't had dinner yet. Uh, first order of business before that is to get off these. It's really cold out and um, my feet are wet and cold. So uh, I've got my towel here and I'm going to dry my feet off and put some nice warm socks on. There they are. And uh, put my nice dry hiking boots on um, and sit here by the fire and then I'm going to get my dinner going. And uh, I'll, talk about, I'll talk about what happened uh, later when I get in the tent. I'm, I'm just too upset right now to even go there. Alright, so what I did last night was I got a roast. Um, they have these delicious ones um, that they sell at Costco, but they also sell them at Foodland. Uh, I can't remember the name of them right now, but we had one when I went camping with uh, Derek Specht and um, Mike Burns last November, and it was so good. Um, it's pre-cooked, and uh, you just heat it up in the oven. So I just made some noodles to go with it. It comes with gravy and everything, and I thought... Uh, this would be a really good meal to keep me warm tonight because it's supposed to go down to zero. And, um, you know, they say to eat meats and fatty foods and stuff like that. So um, this is what I'm having. I just got to heat it up and eat it and I am starving. It's a meal and it's warming my lap up. <sighs> I'm just getting ready to go to bed and I'm hearing my favorite loon call across the water. It's the haunting one. There it is. And it means that, they think it means that the loon is looking, looking for a mate, looking for its um, babies, or it's a, it's a call to find uh, another loon. Hey! Well, 
it's about 9 30 on Thursday night and um, I am on a beautiful campsite in Tamagami on Red Squirrel Lake <laughs> um, I've been avoiding making this video because I really don't know what to say right now I'm I'm disappointed um, I'm upset with myself um, I don't like quitting I don't like not succeeding um, I planned a very big route. I know it was a big route. 46 kilometers of paddling, uh, 9,100 meters of portaging. Um, but the thing is that the portages, um, I did a lot of research. I asked a lot of people. And from what I found out, the portages haven't really been used in a very long time. Um, that we know of. So the plan was to go from Red Squirrel clockwise down to Lenore for the first night over to Lenore for the first night um, today was a 500 meter and a 1200 meter then down to Tass Lake for night two down to spawning for night three where I'm supposed to be meeting up with my friend Dave Wilfong uh, for the night he was gonna hang out and uh, bring some steaks and you know maybe do some fishing hopefully catch some fish and just hang out and visit um, he's just over at Kewadden so and he helped me a lot with this trip. Um, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry everybody who helped me with this route. <sighs> I'm so disappointed. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be super negative. I'm not usually, but that's just how I feel right now. And that's why I didn't want to make the video because I feel like, I feel like a, a failure right now. I didn't do what I set out to do. I was so stoked about this loop. There's supposed to be moose and there's supposed to be lynx and you know, I got all this advice and help and I'm prepared and I can't get through. I can't get through. So I have no idea what I'm gonna do right now. Um, I don't have a clue. Um, tomorrow morning I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna paddle to the takeout and put the canoe on the car and leave. That was my first um, thought. And I'm still, I'm still thinking about it. But most likely what I'm going to do is um, go see Dave tomorrow. I'm going to paddle to Kiwaden and say, hey, I'm here a day early. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at the map right now and see if I can find a different route. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to get up tomorrow. I'm going to see how I feel. And um, I'm either going to drive and call Dave or I'm going to paddle to Kiwaden. I took a chance and I didn't succeed this time so uh, that's the way it is I guess. Nothing I can do about it. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Good night. There's lots of loons here at least and they're calling and they're so cute. They're just making the the, the haunting call, the one that they're looking for another loon. And it's really sweet so there's my my positive note and I had a nice fire tonight and uh, my dinner was really yummy um, yeah and I'm on a great site so there's some good things good night well good morning it's about 6 40 on Friday morning and um, I didn't sleep very well. Probably took me you know, over an hour to get to sleep last night. Uh, I'm not sure why I was I was comfortable. It wasn't too cold, but for some reason I just couldn't fall asleep and was really tired. Um, probably because I was so upset. Anyways, um, it's really chilly out, but it's not as cold as I thought it would be, so that's good. Um, we'll see how I feel when I get up. I'm going to go back to bed for a little bit. There's no point in uh, getting up super early because it's dark out and it's cold and um, I don't really have a huge agenda today. Well, good morning again. <laughs> it's uh, just about 8 o'clock on Friday morning. I just got up again and uh, still overcast. It's supposed to be uh, partly cloudy today, but it looks more like mostly cloudy. Um, it's really cold, so I got a fire going and... Uh, just kind of moving around, warming myself up before I uh, strip down and change my clothes. 
Um, I'm going to make some oatmeal, I guess, first uh, so that it can cool down while I um, tear down camp. I haven't done absolutely anything in the tent yet. Well, there was this really nice little grill here sitting on the ground, so since I have a fire going, I'm going to boil my water um, on the fire and save some fuel. Uh, it's funny because I slept with the fuel in my sleeping bag all night because yesterday it did not work very well because it was so cold even though I have the all-season fuel. Uh, it was still really, really slow to boil the water from my hot water bottle, which is still warm, by the way, after uh, almost 12 hours. Pretty impressive. It was supposed to be so cold this weekend. Um, I didn't bring any eggs. I brought four oatmeals, one for every day. And to keep from getting bored, I have a different fruit every day. So today's strawberry. Uh, tomorrow I have pineapple, the next day I have peach, and the next day I have apple, and you know, I can eat them in any order, but um, one for each day. Now well, that's about quarter after eight. I'm just sitting here eating my oatmeal. Um, I haven't packed a thing, I haven't changed. I, uh, I just don't have any motivation whatsoever today. Um, I'm still really bummed about yesterday. I'm still really bummed about not doing the loop that I wanted to do and uh, I thought hey you know what I'm out here I might as well just sit here and enjoy myself. <laughs> well while I was packing I had a big debate over whether I should bring my water socks and my sandals or my rubber boots and um, I settled on the socks and the sandals because the water is still actually really warm even though the air is not um, and plus I get my feet wet a lot on these trips. Um, there's just no way around it. Uh, the portage yesterday, for example, uh, there was absolutely no way to get anywhere close to shore to keep my feet dry. Um, you had to step in the water and get around the rocks to get the boat up onto the shore. So um, I got them dry by the fire, but uh, I think that the better option was probably the rubber boots and since I have to paddle right past uh, where I put in yesterday, I think I'm going to stop and switch the socks and the sandals out for the rubber boots um, just to keep my feet drier and warmer. Well it's just a little after 9.30 and uh, I'm all packed up and ready to go. So I'm going to make my way to <laughs> the takeout, put in, whichever, uh, where I came from yesterday and uh, just jump out of the canoe quick and go switch off my um, water socks and uh, keen sandals for my rain boots, uh, my rubber boots. And uh, then I'm going to make my way to the 700 meter portage um, into Sandy Inlet, paddle up uh, Ferguson Bay, or down, I'm not sure, um, towards Keewaden and uh, surprise my friend Dave because <laughs> I'm a day early and uh, I'm not supposed to be here right now. I'm supposed to be somewhere else. So hopefully he's around and uh, he doesn't have anything going on today. Well, even though I'm not in the loop I'm supposed to be in, I'm still really remote. There's nobody out here. I haven't seen anybody since I got here yesterday. I changed my footwear Got my rubber boots on now, and my feet are already warmer. Um, it's kind of like I'm starting my trip again, so I feel like I should do another intro. Uh, hey, <laughs> I'm at the Red Squirrel Access in Tomogamy, and it's Friday morning. Um, I'm going to be heading to Kewadin Camp um, on Devil's Island to visit my friend Dave. I'm just going to make my way around this point. It's always another point. I'm like, oh, it's that one. Then I paddle and oh, there's another one. I just got to make my way around the point and then go right to get to the portage. Well, I'm just about at the portage. You can hear the, the rapids there. There's a waterfall that I'm going uh, around, which is why I'm needing to do the portage.
really hope there's actually a portage here. There's no sign. Um, I've scouted around the shore a little bit. And this looks like the only area where uh, there's somewhere there. That yellow tree is actually in farther. You can, there's a little tiny opening there. Um, so I hope that's it. I'm going to go check it out. Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe I found the portage. Uh, I walked just a little way up. It looks like there's a, a fairly clear path. Uh, because nothing's marked, and uh, PJ asked if I could um, mark any trails along the way, so I just brought some green trail tape, and I'm just going to tie some on a couple of the trees here uh, for the next people, and then I'm going to make my way through the portage. Okay, I'll just put a couple pieces of trail tape at the entrance. I'm going to see if how well you can see it from over here. Wow, it just got like really, really cold. It's not super visible because it's green, but you can still see it at least. Well, so far this is a very, very nice trail. However, <laughs> I've only done about 100 meters, <laughs> but looks good. I'm happy. Well, so far the portage has been really great. There was one tree that was down um, over the trail and uh, it took about five minutes to, to break it and bend it back and get it off the trail. So that was good. I was about to say that uh, it's raining now, but I think it's either sleet or snow. I can see it bouncing off the rocks and stuff. Um, little white dots so because I'm in the forest it's a little hard to tell but I think it's either snow or sleet